This is the Wicked Cool Arcade from Everlasting Evergreen. Uh, he was a, a viewer and he reached out to me and said, hey, would you just check out my build for me? And there's a 64 gigabyte running a motion blue build. Motion blue was a great base image back in the day. Now it's not the most recent version of Retro Pie, but it's it's new enough that's going to play all these games just fine. It's rocking, um, I want to say over 3,000 games. It's a 64 gigabyte, and it has this custom attract mode that you're seeing here. It's a nested system, so if you go into consoles, it'll then break down your consoles into the different systems. You can go back at any time, and each room is a little different. Each room has custom music. It's um, not one of those do everything builds, but it's definitely a build in which, you know, it has a lot of personality. I'll just say that. So in this video, let's go ahead and boot it up. It's got uh, one of the. It's got a random uh, introduction videos. I just included one that didn't have copyrighted music, and then but there's some cool like Scorpion, Mortal Kombat themed ones, some cool Street Fighter themed ones, arcade themed ones. But as you're seeing here, there's a definitely a Stranger theme. Uh, motif going on but as far as the music it, it really ranges as well from James Brown to come on feel the noise to you know, all sorts of stuff and then it says like toasty when you uh, when you change games and stuff so uh, let's jump into this one um, we'll check it out this is for the Raspberry Pi 3B plus not the Raspberry Pi 4 <laughs> When you first when you first when you first boot up the image, you will um, actually not be here. This is a motion blue image, an older uh, base image, but a really nice one made by David Marty back in the day. And uh, it starts an emulation station. You can go ahead and boot it in a track mode. Um, a track mode's working really good on an Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller. All the controls are working great, both in emulation station and in uh, a track mode here. And this is a totally custom theme. It's got stranger things in it, but you're going to see some of the rooms and some of the way the systems are nested and the different uh, marquees and everything else. It's very unique in that regard. And that's why we're kind of just going to play around here. Um, but lots of visuals, lots of music. I had to cut out a lot of the music here because um, a lot of it was getting copyrighted. Everything from James Brown to Come On, Feel the Noise 
to uh, Knight Rider theme. Um, there's a lot of custom music in here, and it's not necessarily a jukebox. It's that each room you go into, whether it be your favorites, for example, which has the James Brown song in it, but if you go into like certain consoles, the music changes. Um, so it's pretty interesting. Um, that's what this image is all about, is it's very custom, a lot of custom graphics and custom uh, rooms, and then the way he has um, you know, a track mode set up here, it's very unique. Now this is running on the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. And this is really where the biggest downside in my mind is just the lag. And that's just due to the hardware. Um, you know, this would run a lot better on the Raspberry Pi 4, but we really don't have a, a motion blue uh, base image like this. I might actually take that new image with the dual displays. I feel like that's pretty close and work on that. But this particular image was for the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. Look at that. You got the Carlton <laughs> there. It's very custom as I mentioned. Um, now, Motion Blue was cool because it had all the scripts installed. It could pretty much do everything. It was, it was user-friendly. So if you want to grab this and then customize it even more, that could be pretty cool. Um, if you notice when I hit certain bust buttons or you open certain things, it does the Mortal Kombat toasty. And yeah, it's got all the little weird, not weird, but it's just like that. When you go back, you get the, you know, the call out there as well. Um, the game collection area is pretty cool. Like, this is really unique. How he took out the background, it looks like these are just floating here. Like, that's something I really like about the image that he did really well. And then you'll notice here in a second when we go to hacks, it's got a really cool little video here for the hack games as well. Double Dragon, Donkey Kong games, Dragon Ball Z games, Final Fantasy. You name it, there's a collection for it. Using an RX modulator, I might be able to conduct a mainframe cell direct and hack the uplink to the download. What the hell does that mean? It means that with the right computer algorithms, I can hack you back in time. Just like a time machine. So now moving into the actual rooms here. In a second, I just went back, and then let's go into like consoles. So it is a nested system, so when you go to the main menu here, you can go into handhelds, you can go into arcade, and here is arcade, for example. And when you click arcades, you got Daphne, and then you got all your different collections here as well. And then when you click in, you can actually go in and see all those games. It has a really big arcade set at 2,300, just shy of 2,300 games including CPS 1, 2, and 3 games as well. But you can see when you go in, it's got a really cool, um, you know, arcade theme there. I was messing around with a lot of different uh, areas here. And then here you go with the handhelds. Game Boy, Game Boy Color. And now you'll see later in the video when I show you what exactly is on here, it has, you know, limited games per system. They're hand selected. It's not the whole entire set. So here's some of the arcade section when you actually go into arcade classics. Um, I noticed they had a lot of really popular arcade games on here. A few that I was kind of hoping they had. They didn't have like Zombie Raid, but you can easily add those on your own. But it's still at, tw at close to 2300, it's quite a large arcade set. And it has everything from PlayStation 1 to arcade, Atari, Nintendo. It's got a good, good solid uh, set of consoles. Now, um, you can go into the system settings here, and we can go into emulation station. Um, it's not really set up, but it's a good way for us to see exactly what's on this image. So when you are in emulation station, you can go ahead and see the categories a little easier and the numbers. Arcade 2282, Atari 2600, 171, 7800, you got 56, Daphne, you got three, it's Space Ace, and then the two um, Dragon's Lairs. Game Gear, you only have very few, six. So he picks his games, as you see here. Game Boy Advance, very few games as well. This is only 64 gigabyte, 14. It's only a 64 gigabyte build. You can add games as you want, seven Game Boy Color, um, you know, or put it on a bigger card. Mega Drive has a lot. It's like 200 and something for Sega Genesis Mega Drive. Nintendo 64, again, very few, about a couple dozen. And remember, this isn't really meant to be done in Emulation Station, so if you're wondering why um, the video snaps aren't working or it doesn't look a certain way, um, Nintendo 246, 
PlayStation, probably want to see which 24 those are. And yes, this white screen is normal. It's because it's not set up to be an emulation station. Then you have a RetroPie setup, Sega 32X, 13. You know, you want to boot this into a track mode. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. 200 Super NES. And then these are all... Um, those are all custom collections. Those are just the same games, just in their proper places. So 3451, for example, Street Fighter, that's all their Street Fighter games, whether it's up for the arcade or for example, Super Nintendo or Mega Drive. And then he has some favorites as well, if you're curious what he's really into. Some really great arcade games here. Terminator 2 and Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. And then if you want to go back to a track mode or you're booting up for the first time, all you would do is you'd enter your controls and then go all the way down to the third to last track mode, click in. So my final thoughts, oh, I don't want that. My final thoughts on this particular build. I'm not going to rate this one. I really don't think it's amazing. It's like one of the best out there. I think it just has a lot of personality. Um, and so for that, I got to give the creative score, you know, a 10 out of 10. Um, as far as the ROM sets and what games were included and things like that, you know, I showed them to you. You can make your own judgment if that's what you want or not. Did it? Did this set out and do what it said it was going to do and make an awesome arcade image? Yes. And I think a lot of people will like that it has, um, you know, limited number of games because some people, there are this few people where it's like, why would you put that many games on an image when you'll never have time to play all of them? 
and you just spend half your time scrolling through the games. Well, if that's the case, then maybe this is the right image for you. And as you see, he put a lot of kind of the main titles. You know, most people who want to play portables play Pokemon. I mean, that was a really great game for, you know, a lot of the Nintendo portables. And, um, you know, like like uh, Sonic. It has all the Sonic games on it. It has all the Street Fighter games on it. Things like all the Mortal Kombat games on it. Um, the collections is really cool. A lot of custom stuff in here. I really like what he did with the artwork here. Um, whoops, I hit left. I meant to go. I want to go. It's kind of weird. You have to scroll with up and down here, not left and right. That's why I kept doing that in the video. It's up and down to move this menu. And uh, all custom there. So with all that said, I got to give the man two thumbs up for taking an image, making it his own. Um, I'm liking it. If uh, you know, Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks again to Evergreen. Good work. It just opens up new possibilities. Pizza power, y'all. Catch on later.